It is called CRA technique uh, popularly in Tamil Nadu, not thinking that it is a climate resilient agriculture. Uh, it is called that way because I am the CRA in that particular state. I am the Commissioner Revenue Administration and since I introduced this technique, people popularly call it as CRA technique. We only gave this uh, expansion to the acronym as uh, climate resilient agriculture and water conserving root zone irrigation technique. It's again, before uh, I go through the lecture, don't think that this is going to be a rocket science. It's a common science sense. It's not common sense. It's a common science sense. With that, I think let us get into the uh, presentation. So, the increases in temperatures as well as changes in precipitation patterns, changes in hydrology, these are all likely to affect all biological systems. More so the plants which will rely upon water directly. The, uh, the Advance, adverse impact will be more on agriculture crops, as I think all of you are quite aware, and especially on tree species. And the impact is likely to affect the concerns of, or it is going to be of serious concern for small and marginal farmers, because their livelihood is always uh, very precarious. One uh, drop in the yield levels, their livelihood is going to be affected. So, importance of afforestation. If you look at from the context of global warming, or to prevent soil erosion or to prevent air pollution or if you want to maintain biodiversity or if you want to maintain ecological balance, afforestation plays a very key role. In fact, in Kyoto Protocol, afforestation was supposed to be one of the major strategies to reduce the uh, carbon because trees act as carbon sink, they sequester carbon. So, in afforestation programs, normally what happens is Forest department may have different standards, rural development department may have different standards. Farmers who adopt either uh, agriculture tree species or horticulture tree species and climbers, they follow different practices as far as watering is concerned. Conventional surface watering is by and large the practice in all governmental programs. Pitcher irrigation is uh, confined to horticulture department and drip irrigation also is confined to horticulture department. But this pitcher irrigation and drip irrigation are adopted only uh, for growing horticulture fruit trees because this is expensive. You cannot do it for a normal uh, tree plantation. Therefore, there is a need for developing a very low cost. At the same time, it has to be effective technique. So, I was fortunate to come out with a very low cost, simple but effective technique for growing trees. And this was... Uh, tested in 2016 by a rural development department. This is uh, the very next year of leaving uh, Hyderabad and joining there in um, Tamil Nadu. I was posted in a post where the workload was very less for me. So, I was just thinking what else I can do, how do we, uh, how do we come out with something, some technique which can help the dryland farmers. And that is the result of this and immediately we tried it in 2016 under Narega program. So, now I would like to uh, share a video with you people. Under the MGNREG scheme, a large number of saplings were planted and tended by following the innovative watering technique suggested by Dr. K. Satyagopal IAS. From the pictures, it can be seen that the saplings planted as per the new method grew much better and taller than the seedlings planted as per the conventional methods. He has now brought some important changes to the watering technique to suit the requirement of fruit bearing trees. In the 2 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet pit dug for planting the sapling, an additional hole of 1 foot depth is drilled using an auger. Depending on the type of the soil, if required more holes may be drilled in the corners. If an auger is not available, a crowbar can be used for making the hole or holes. The hole is filled with one or two handfuls of sieved vermicompost or organic manure and then with river sand. Later, four PVC pipes 
with 4 inch diameter may be placed above the holes and in the pit as shown in the picture. Sieved vermicompost or organic manure is mixed with a dugout soil and three fourths of the pit must be filled. Then a small pit must be made as shown. The pit is filled with two handfuls of unsieved vermicompost or organic manure and the saplings is planted. The pit must then be fully covered with the dugout soil. Now, Two handfuls of sieved vermicompost or organic manure must be poured into the PVC pipes, which must then be filled with river sand or any other water absorbent material. Then all the four PVC pipes must be carefully removed and the sapling watered. The water percolates down and keeps the root zone always moist. This improved method will be useful for fruit bearing trees such as mango, gova, coconut and other saplings because through this new method water percolates down up to 3 feet through the 4 sand columns. Farmers adopting drip irrigation system can plant the saplings as suggested in this new method so that water from drip irrigation system percolates easily to the entire root zone up to 3 feet below through the four sand columns. As the root grows, the vermicompost or manure applied provides necessary nourishment to the growing sapling. And since the root zone is always moist, the sapling will have a lush and healthy growth. Besides reducing evaporation losses, water requirement will also come down. Farmers who are not able to access drip irrigation system can also adopt this method in their fields and take advantage of this innovative watering method to grow the saplings better. The normal method is 2 into 2 into 2 pit is dug and in the corners you can put the PVC pipes and then add a bit of vermicompost and then the river sand. That is a normal technique. Suppose if you are planting certain species which require a lot of water and the area is a bit water stressed and you want to push a maximum level of water then you can go for this additional um, holes. Now in this particular technique, you might have noticed that the PVC pipes are removed immediately after planting. So therefore the cost of this technique becomes very less. If you, if you retain the PVC pipe, it will be very expensive. But since we form the sand column, PVC pipes are basically used to provide the sand column. Otherwise you can't make a sand column in an open pit. So you are taking the support of the PVC pipes. So the same set of PVC pipes can be repeatedly used. Suppose the river sand is not available. There could be some uh, regions where river sand is not available. Then we can use any other water absorbing material. In fact, ED has come out with a hydrogel called as PUSA gel, uh, that is a water absorbing gel. And or we can use rice husk or vermicompost itself or cow dung or anything else can be done. M, sa M sand, all these things can be applied. And as we have explained in the video, the moment water is applied, it is goes down up to 2 feet. If you have additional holes, up to 3 feet. The beauty of river sand, which I strongly recommend is, once the column is saturated, the moment you pour water, the water is just absorbed up to the 2 feet level. So it becomes saturated. Once it is saturated, when more water is getting in, the water moves laterally. And the entire root zone, the rhizosphere will retain the moisture. And while planting, every farmer will apply nutrients. Whether it is a climber or a tree crop, they will apply some nutrients. So here you are providing both nutrients as well as root zone which what many people may not be knowing is if you take the root the top portion probably up to half a foot it can absorb only 40 percent of the water and down below the remaining 60 percent of the water is absorbed so since you are taking it up to two feet the entire water requirement of the plant is absorbed by the plant so this was formally adopted in 2017 by agriculture department and horticulture department uh, in tamil nadu then under Narega, this program is still continuing. Uh, Greater Chennai Corporation also has adopted this. And NABAD in Chennai, uh, they have now decided to practice this in all their uh, pockets of tribal development for growing uh, tree type uh, species. And then TVS group in Tamil Nadu, they have a trust. They are doing the CSR activities. They are implementing this in uh, Andhra, Tamil Nadu and uh, Karnataka, probably pockets of Telangana also. Then Murugappa Chetia Research Centre. They wanted to test this first initially in their uh, uh, field 
and having been satisfied about the with the results now they decided to extend this in all their regular programs now what are the advantages of this first and foremost it will be water conservation so the requirement will be less evaporation losses will be minimized then water use efficiency with less water the plant is growing much taller that means the efficiency of the water that has been used is much higher then enhanced nutrient absorption unless the nutrients are also absorbed the growth will not be there this is again an inference then the other inference which we could uh, make out is the plant is able to express its full genetic potential because the same plant normal uh, watering all of the factors being the same is much shorter than the same uh, species with this additional intervention the growth is phenomenal i will be showing some of the pictures how could we do this taller growth and healthier growth increase leaf surface area so it is not only the height that is there it is not only the canopy that is much more but at the individual leaf level i will be showing some pictures the leaf size is bigger whenever the cra technique is used enhanced productivity we did uh, some studies with climbers and um, uh, creepers we got results even for the um, uh, yield levels that i will show it a bit later then enhanced carbon sequestration as i was mentioning a bit earlier because of the increased biomass there will be additional uh, carbon sequestration and also because of the additional leaf uh, surface area that is there at the individual leaf level because you are using less water whether you, you are using drip irrigation or normal irrigation you are pumping water from the ground level that means you are using power you are using fossil fuels so once the requirement is coming down your uh, carbon emissions also will be coming down and we also found that the growth initially after plantation is so tremendous the girth of the uh, stem is quite more when compared to the normal method that signifies that even in the first year if there is a drought this plant will be able to withstand it because the plant accumulates its reserve material in the stem one of the portions it stores in uh, different uh, um, parts of its um, uh, thing but stem is the main region then this also helps you see today we are concerned not only with climate resilience but also with cell, uh, sustainable development goals also we are there and paris climate uh, agreement also is there because this is a low cost technique even if a farmer cannot afford drip irrigation he can use this method and derive benefits this can be adopted by small farmer women farmers as well as tribal farmers then suppose if a farmer is well to do if he adopts this technique he will be having he will be having sustainable incomes fao and who they have come out with a program called fruits and vegetables for health initiative since this technique is found to be very beneficial even for vegetables growing on creepers and climbers it can be made uh, use of scalability issue also we have uh, looked at it since it is very low cost and since the technique can be adopted in all types of soil based on our feedback and also it is very simple anyone uh, can adopt this and it can be easily be uh, scaled up at the state level and national level in tamil nadu now we are implementing in a much bigger scale than what it was in 2016 and 17 uh, it has now become a common practice for horticulture department and agriculture during their oil seed uh, uh, growing program and now my best efforts is to see that this technique is taken to other states i am trying my best to take it to other states another advantage with this uh, thing is if we can adopt this principle you can also save the existing trees if they are under water stress uh in fact in tamil nadu during 2017 in tirupur and coimbatore and most of the coconut trees are under stress we uh, modified this uh, technique and then adopted the principle and we could save a large number of coconut trees in 8000 hectares we could uh, save coconut trees and all the materials required for adopting this technique they are available locally and they are all part of the nature except the pvc pipes now the other advantage is uh, advantage with this technique is initially i was trying to Uh, put it as a uh, opposing the drip irrigation system because this is very low cost whereas drip irrigation is very expensive but subsequently we decided that we can also blend it with drip irrigation and once you blend it uh, with the drip irrigation the water consumption uh, will come down what the farmer has to do is while planting a seedling he has to adopt this method and on top of the sand column he has to put the dripper then water automatically directly goes through the sand column but 
if this is being done with climbers, we need not go for a 3 inch or a 4 inch die up PVC pipe because the water requirement in climbers will be much less. So, you can go for a 2 inch die up pipe, either 4 or 2 depending upon the water availability and water requirement of the individual uh, species that has been chosen. Once we blend it with drip, drip irrigation, the water requirement will be coming down further. When compared with the normal surface irrigation, drip irrigation, there is a tremendous savings of water. And once you blend this, the water requirement will be coming down further and moisture in deeper layers of ri uh, rhizosphere will help in faster and healthier tree growth. Because of the further reduction in water, you are still having the benefit of reducing the carbon footprint. And because of the greater biomass that could be seen, once this technique is adopted, there will be enhanced carbon sequestration. So now, this is all the theory. The proof of uh, pudding is uh, in eating it. Unless you see the results, any amount of uh, giving a lecture will be of no use. So we took uh, uh, biometric data and you can see the uh, difference. Tamarind is one of the very, very slow growing species. Those who are uh, dealt with the tamarind, you can understand. So this we have done in Tanjavur district. Uh, you can see the data plantation 21 10 uh, 2016, both the things were 20 centimeters. And when we took the measurement in uh, January 2019, in the normal method, the growth was 138 centimeters, whereas here it is 300 centimeters. The girth from 1 it has gone up to 10, whereas in the CR technique it has gone from 1 to 21. This is mango. In two years, the difference is 3 feet and 7 inch. I am not going into the details of the girth that we can see later. This is a novel, Jamun uh, tree. I think now, today it is becoming very popular for medicinal property it has for controlling diabetes. And the difference uh, in 2 years and 3 months is 7 feet and uh, 2 inches. This is Jack. In 2 years and 5 months the difference is 3 feet and 9 inch. Goa in 1 year the difference is 4 feet and 3 inches. Sapota in 2 years the increase is 4 feet and 7 inch. Now coming to oil seed species. In Pongamia, in 2 years it is 4 feet and 9 inches. Neem in 6 months the difference was 4 feet. Coming to timber species, the difference will be much more. In all timber species what we found is, the increase is uh, about 10 and above. Here in uh, Mahagani in uh, 2 years and 2 months it is nearly 15 feet. In Teak it is 9 and a half uh, feet in 1 year and 6 months. Coming to medicinal plants, Amla, in 6 months the difference in height was about 6 feet. And uh, in Terminalia Arjuna, it is 12 feet and 1 inch in 2 years and 2 months. Albizia Lebak, it is uh, in uh, roughly 2 years, it is 6 feet and 3 inches. In uh, Bombax Siba, that is silk cotton, the silk cotton seeds are also used for medicinal purpose. Besides the cotton being used for pillows and uh, mattresses. The difference is uh, 12 feet and 6 inches. Flowering trees, uh, in Mayflower, in uh, 1 and a half years, it is 11 feet and 6 inches. In Mimosa, it is 4 feet and 11 inches. And when you look at the uh, biometric data of the girth, this is uh, Murungai, this is um, uh, our uh, drumstick. Drumstick today is positioned by FAO for reducing anemia, especially among the women. In African countries, they are pushing this uh, drumstick in a very, very big way. And we found that besides the yield increases, uh, the girth, I am just showing it to you. I told you about the leaf size area. Now you can see here in Pungam, on the left side, it is the normal, on the right side, is, it is the CRA technique. The same difference you could notice in neem also. Overall biomass, you, I will just show you a couple of pictures. Uh, this is even uh, pomegranate we tried and we noticed that pomegranate, it started yielding much earlier than the, uh, norm, uh, the control. We also tried to compare how does it stand with older plantations. So we took some locations where the plantations were there for three years. Uh, one, one month short of three years and another plantation of Sierra technique where it is one month short of two years. Just let us have a look at some other pictures. Uh, this is uh, Badam. The younger plant is five feet and four inches taller besides the uh, biomass. Then uh, Mayflower, you can see that started flowering whereas the older one has not yet started flowering and difference in height was about 14 feet. And this is Arasamaram. Royal wood. Here it is 5 feet and 10 inches. And then uh, strikers, this is actually uh, rosewood. Here the difference is about 18 feet. And uh, Sizesium cumin in Aval, here 11 feet and 2 inches. And Madhuka longifolia, difference is about 11 feet. Despicia populinia, 
this is about 3 feet and all now i told you that this can also be blended with drip irrigation so we in some parcels of land what we did is we had a plot with drip irrigation alone and another plot where there is a blending cra technique plus um, um, this drip irrigation this is a technique where the control plot is drip irrigation and the other plot is the treatment is only cra technique in watermelon what we noticed is the irrigation interval in drip irrigation was once in 5 days whereas in cra technique it is once in 9 days in spite of it they found more internodal flowers when compared with the normal uh, this drip irrigation system and ultimately translated into a additional increase of 60% yield in pumpkin the additional yield was about 48% and you could notice that uh, the irrigation interval was longer in uh, cra technique when compared with uh, drip irrigation in spite of the lesser requirement of water there was an additional yield of 44% in snake gout 38% in ash gout and 38% in cucumber now is the blending so the left hand side is only drip the right hand side is the blending you are able to see the difference na the canopy the number of leaves the growth everything is phenomenally high so now all the data that i have showed so far there i could get it from officers who are working directly under me now this independent evaluation done by muruga pachettiar research trust mango in one year they found it to be 4 feet difference in coconut 4 feet and 2 inches within a period of one year and this is called uh, white teak kumil in tamil it's but like locally it's called as white teak this is also an ornament uh, there is a timber species the difference was about 14 feet then universities you may ask sir the research trust also we don't trust so let us go to some academic institution so in uh, manohar mani sundarnar university when they did this in uh, rain tree there are so many but i am confining some of the pictures to see that uh, we cover the entire uh, presentation quickly 7 feet and 1 inch was the difference in neem in one year and one month it is 4 feet in pongamia again it is 4 feet and 1 inch in chennai corporation the edible trees i have not yet shown they tried this in spetaudia in one year and two months the difference was 1 foot but you look at the biomass how much bigger it is this is another uh, seedling here the difference was 5 uh, feet and 7 inches and in peltoforum the difference in one year is 4 feet and 11 inches uh, here it is uh, another location it is 9 feet and 2 inches then uh, another species it is 3 feet and 3 inches in one year pelta form in another uh, park it is 8 feet and 10 inches then uh, spetodia within 6 months that growth difference was 4 feet and 11 inches and uh, another species is 3 feet and uh, 11 inch this is what i would like to uh, show you so the independent evaluation also we could try to see and i told you that existing trees also can be uh, protected by the side of the existing tree you have to draw a small circle leaving a space of about 1 and 1/2 to 2 feet from the edges of the main trunk then start drilling some 3 to 5 holes here you don't need to put pvc pipe because the soil is already very compacted and the structural stability of the hole that has been dug will be intact so straight away you can apply some vermi compost and on top of that river sand and if the farmer is having drip irrigation the dripper can be put on that and once we did this as i said we saved about 8000 hectares coconut trees in tirpur and coimbatore and the farmer feedback was premature but button shed, uh, this uh, button shedding has uh, reduced significantly then the plants looked greenish when compared with those plots where they did not try this 30 to 40% water saving was there and the farmers were very happy that within the given quantum of water they had during the drought period they could save large number of trees and saving an existing tree is worth planting about 100 to 200 uh, new species because of the general mortality associated and the time lag it requires for yielding now they could uh, save it and so next year when they got good rains it started yielding so now i would like to show a couple of uh, video films which will be only 2 to 3 minutes each nam per kirubanga kanjipuram maavattam கரசங்கல் கிராமம் இதில் வந்து நாற்றங்கள் பண்ணியில் மகாத்மா காந்தி தேசிய ஊர வேலை திட்டத்தின் கீழே பனிதள பொறுப்பாளராக இருக்கிறேன் அதில் ஒரு ஏக்கர் வந்து மாமரம் அறுபது மாமரம் வச்சுருக்கோம் அதில் சாதாரணமாக வந்து ஆறு மாமரமும் சிஆர்ஏ மெத்தடில் ஐம்பத்தி நாலு மாமரமும் வச்சுருக்கோம் 
இந்த சாதாரண மெத்தடில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஹைட்டு வந்து ஆறு அடி அதோடைய தண்டு பகுதி பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நாலரை இன்ச்சு தான் இருக்குது இதில் இருந்து கலைகள் வந்து ரெண்டு தான் இருக்குது அதுலேயும் கம்மியாக தான் இருக்குது உபரி கலைகளும் கம்மியாக இருக்குது இதோடைய இலை வந்து பார்த்திங்கன்னா சத்தே இல்லாமல் அகலம் நீளம் எல்லாமே கம்மியாக தான் இருக்குது இதோடைய இலை நீளம் பாருங்கள் எட்டு இன்ச் இருக்குது இதோடைய அகலம் பாருங்கள் இந்த இலையோடைய அகலம் ரெண்டு இன்ச்சோடைய கம்மியாக இருக்குது பாருங்கள் சிஆர்ஏ மெத்தடில் ஐம்பத்தி நாலு செடி வச்சுருக்கோம் இந்த செடி பார்த்திங்கன்னா நல்லா வளர்ந்துருக்கு இந்த ஐம்பத்தி நாலு செடியிலும் இந்த செடி திட்டத்திட்ட ஒம்பது அடி உயரம் உள்ளது அதோடைய தண்டு பகுதி பார்த்திங்கன்னா பத்து இன்ச்சு இருக்குது அதில் இருந்து கிளைகள்லாம் நிறைய வந்துருக்கு அதுவும் சத்து உள்ளதாகவும் இருக்குது இலை பச்சை பசியலும் இருக்குது இதோடைய இலையோடைய நீளம் பார்த்திங்கன்னா பன்னெண்டு இன்ச்சு இருக்குது அந்த இலையோடைய அகலம் வந்து கிட்டத்தட்ட ரெண்டரை இன்ச்சு இருக்குது தோட்டக்கலையில் இருந்து வந்து வந்து பார்த்துட்டு இன்னும் ஒரு வருஷத்துக்குள்ளே பூ பூக்கும்னு சொல்லியிருக்காங்க சாதாரண மரத்தில் வந்து பூ வந்து ஒரு ஆறு மாதம் எக்ஸ்ட்ரா ஆகும்னு சொல்லியிருக்காங்க இதில் வந்து கீழ்டு வந்து நிறைய தரம்னு சொல்லியிருக்காங்க நாங்கள் இதையே பயன்படுத்திக்கிறோம்